Let's do this action movie style. Let's get... Oh, wait. This is not right. The sleeves are for losers and Cadians. <laughs> oh, man. I should have skipped sleeve tear and day. <sighs> what are my chain scissors? Hello fellow heroes of the blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to another episode of Heavy Contrast, a series where I try to paint a miniature to the highest standard possible using just contrast paints and highlights. And for this episode we are painting a Katachan Imperial Guard, specifically the new limited edition Surgeon Ripper Jackson. So let's get cracking. As you can see, we're starting from a base coat of Wraithbone, and I also did a very quick layer of Wraithbone base paint over all the flesh areas, because some parts were still showing some of the grey plastic underneath. And for the first step, I'm going to apply a layer of dark old flesh over all the flesh areas. As always, with contrast paints, I apply the paint to an area and then go back with my brush and absorb any excess. This is a very good example. This is way too much contrast paint, so I will just take that off and continue on. The dark old flesh layer is now dry and I'm going to take a one to one mix of ice layer flesh and make us purple and I'm going to use this to shade the skin a bit more. Especially I'm going to pick her eyes with this, mouth, but also all the muscles, I want them to be well defined. Also, I'm going to thin this mix into a glaze consistency using Lamian Medium. You can see the sort of thin consistency I'm having here. And I'm going to glaze this into the lower sections of all the muscles. Just think on where the light will fall and apply this on the opposite. For example, here on the underside of her arm. In general, picking up each volume of each muscle and applying this to the lower parts. I will let this first layer of glazes dry and once they are dry, I'm going to apply a second one. For example, here is already dry, I'm going to apply a second one until I'm happy with how defined her musculature is. My shading with Fire Slayer Flesh and Magus Purple is now finished and you can see how much definition that shading has achieved to the muscles and the face. And I'm going to highlight all those areas. For this I'm going to use Kislev Flesh and I have it thinned down to a sort of heavy glaze consistency and I have the camera zoomed in quite a lot so you can see everything I do well because she is absolutely tiny. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and glaze the skiss flesh on the top of each muscle. You can see here how I'm glazing towards the top. Like 
like so. I'm not going to care too much about the scars because I can I can redefine them very easily later on. I'm also going to make, you can see I've done a highlight here on her apps, right in the middle. And that makes for a real realistic highlight because shine, light will shine there. And I'm going to do the same here because that is straight up from the source of light. So in real life, light will shine there. Just like that. Our highlight with Kisla Flesh is now completely done. And for the next highlight, I'm going to use Screaming Skull. That's the consistency I'm using, and I'm going to apply this in the very highest areas of each muscle. And you can clearly see how much of an effect this has and how bright that looks compared to the rest of the flesh. I'm going to pick up the nose, top of the cheeks, upper lip, and all those places where you expect light to hit. For the highest highlight on the flesh, I'm going to use a one-to-one -one mix of Screaming Skull and White, just to continue up with the yellow spectrum for the highlights and again I'm going to do very small thin highlights for this the consistency of the paint you can see here is thin and I'm just going to apply small highlights again concentrating them towards the upper surfaces now on her face I'm just going to pick up the very tip of the nose here on the upper bridge the side of her nostrils like that. With all our flesh now highlighted, I'm going to start adding tones. And for this, I'm going to use Flesh Tears Red. Again, thin down to a very, very thin glaze consistency. And with this, I'm going to pick up places like the nose, cheeks, ears, her knuckles, the elbows. So think of any part that normally has more blood flow and just apply this to those parts. Don't forget the lips too. For the lips you can use a bit more concentrated version of this. And also I'm going to pick up all the wounds, all around the wounds with this. With those glazes of Flesterous Red applied, I'm going to go back to my main highlight this is a one-to-one -one mix of Screaming Skull and White. And I'm going to apply the most extreme highlights again on all those bits. So picking up the tip of the nose, side of the nostrils. Also don't forget knuckles, very small. Highlight there, elbows. With all my flesh now done, I'm going to take Flesh Tears Red 
and I'm going to paint with this her tongue. And now I'm going to take palette with flesh and I'm going to paint with this her teeth and her eyes. So you're going to try to pick up with this just the eyeball very carefully. And her teeth, of course. And now I'm going to take pure black and I'm going to try and paint the iris. Luckily in this model, only one of the eyes will be healthy because the other one has a scar running through it. So I'm just going to, you won't, you won't, we only need to paint one of them. Now I'm going to try and paint a light reflection on her eye using pure white. Also with pure white I'm going to try and highlight her teeth. And I'm going to do a final highlight on the lower lip. As you can see, I have cleaned up all the areas that will be cloth with Wraithbone and I base coated with Corax White her hair under border casing. And for next step, I'm going to start painting those details with a coat of Grief Charger Grey. I'm being very careful here not to touch any other area, but I want to provide this, these areas with a cold base coat. that I will cover on later on with Black Templar. While the Grief Charger Grey dries, I'm going to apply a 2 to 1 mix of Blood Angels Red and Flesh Tears Red over her bandana. And with the Grief Charger Grey dry, I'm going to cover all the areas that I apply it with Black Templar. Now you really need to be extremely careful not to touch any of the skin and try not to touch any of the cloth. But if you do, just base coat it again with Wraithbone. With all those contrast layers now dry, I'm going to apply another one on her shirt. This shirt again has been cleaned of all the little marks of Black Templar with Wraithbone and now I'm going to apply a layer of Black Bear Flesh over her shirt. While the Black Bear Flesh dries, I'm going to highlight all the black details using Fenris in Grey. On the hair here, I'm just going to pick up the strands here at the front. Also here at the back. And also an edge highlight all around the bolter casing. And now with all the black users highlighted with foundation grey, I'm going to do a final highlight using Ulthul and grey. And I will just pick up the rivets and just the tips of each edge. Same here on the hair, I'm just going to pick up the very ends and a small bit here on the top. With the black parts finished, 
I'm going to do another layer over her t-shirt. This is one part military green and one part contrast medium. With the Militarum green layer now dry, I'm going to start highlighting her t-shirt. For this I'm going to use Ogreen Camo. And I'm having my Ogreen Camo to this sort of thin consistency and I'm going to apply a highlight towards the top. And I also going to pick up, of course, any folds. With that highlight of green camo done, I'm going to move into Creek Khaki. And I will do the same, I have my Creek Khaki thin down to a heavy glaze consistency. And I'm going to apply this paint towards the points where the light would probably hit the most. And of course, as, as before, I'm just going to pick up the folds. And finally for her t-shirt, I'm going to do one more highlight using, in this case, a one-to-one -one mix of Greek khaki and white. Same sort of consistency but I'm just going to concentrate this highlight towards the highest point of light. With her t-shirt now done, I'm going to paint her bandana. And for that, I'm going to highlight it using Wild by the Red. For the next highlight on her bandana, I'm going to use Fire Dragon Bright. And I'm just doing the same edge highlight, but I'm just concentrating it towards the corners and all the folds that I want to make stand out, basically. And for the final highlight on her bandana, I'm going to use Angor Flesh. And with Angor Flesh, I'm just going to do very small dots in the very tips of the corners of each fold, like this. And now with my red bandana highlighted, I'm going to have some fun. And I'm going to, and I'm going to try and paint some patterns onto the fabric. For this, I'm going to use Black Templar, and I'm going to start drawing those patterns randomly like doing kind of tear drop pattern Now I'm going to take Uthu and Grey and I'm going to paint the same pattern inside the previous one. And finally, I'm going to take pure white and I'm going to apply a highlight where it belongs. So, for example, here, the idea is to just continue the pattern of light and shadow already created so these marks don't really stand out too much as, not being, as just being drawn over the top. With all those details done, I went and cleaned up the rest of her clothes using Wraithbone. 
Now I'm going to apply a layer of Crit Camo over all the dark green parts. This includes this leg armor here. And of course all of her clothes. As always, I'm trying to work in sections. And once I've finished the section, I go around absorbing any pullings that have gone where I don't want them. Once the first layer over all those parts is dry, I'm going to apply a second one just over the clothes. Also while doing this, I'm going to apply Crit Camo on their armor, but just on the upper side here. Then I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to feather this out for a quick and easy transition. Our layers of grit camo are now dry and I wasn't really happy the next morning when I wake up so I did a third layer but this one was very specific and only in certain parts where I wasn't happy with how light it was. And now I'm going to highlight all the green cloth using Lauren Forest. I'm just going to do a general highlight with Lauren Forest. And for the second highlight on the green cloth, I'm going to use a struck and green. And now I'm going to try and make a very thin edge highlight with this. I'm just picking up the very edges of the folds. For the next highlight now, on both the green clothes and the green armor on her bionic leg, you're going to use a one-to-one -one mix of a struck and green and a green camel. Here on her leg, I'm just going to do an edge highlight. This will be, of course, all around. And here on the cloth, I am going to do a thin edge highlight, but this time concentrating it towards the most exposed edges, corners of each fold. You know the deal. With that highlight done, I'm going to move into the next one. This will be a green camo. And I will apply this highlight on the cloth, just a small dots highlight, just in the very corners of each fold of the fabric, like that. And here on the armor, I'm going to do a thin edge highlight, but concentrated towards the exposed edges, just not all around like we did before. 
And now finally, just for the armor on her bionic leg, I'm going to use Quick Khaki for the final highlight. And I will just do a small dots in the highest points. All the dark green areas are now finished and I'm going to add camo to her pants. And for this I'm going to start with Tau Light Ochre. And using the box art as reference, I'm going to draw some wavy lines. And then a small fork like shape like that. And for the dark stripes, I'm going to use Black Templar. And I'm going to do the same wavy line, but the fork I will do opposite to the patterns of Tau Light Ochre. With the camo pattern now defined, I'm going to highlight it. And for this I'm going to use Ushapti Bone and I will just paint inside the lines I did previously. For example in places like this where it goes over details I'm just going to avoid any recesses with this. creating a natural light and shadow with it. And finally I'm going to take Fenrisian Grey and I have it thinned down. You can see quite a lot. And what I will do with this is just highlight any of the black stripes where it meets any of the highlights underneath. This might seem like it's not very much but trust me it really, really makes a difference. With that done, there is only just one detail that is not metallic left to paint, and that is the brown leather. I have base coated all the brown leather details using Corax White. Now I'm going to apply a layer of two parts Cygor Brown and one part Contrast Medium. layer of Cygor Brown and Medium is now dry and I'm going to start highlighting all the leather details. For this I'm going to use Blood Reaver's Flesh and I will do a thick edge highlight with Blood Reaver Flesh all around the leather. That highlight with Blood Reaper Flesh is now done. I'm going to move into Night Quester Flesh for my second highlight. Again, this will be a niche highlight all around our leather pieces, but I'm going to try and make it very thin. The idea here is to paint a line of this inside of the thicker line we did with the previous highlight.
with that highlight done I'm going to move into a one-to-one -one mix of Night Questor Flesh and Kislev Flesh. And with this I'm just going to make the same thin edge highlight, but as always I'm going to concentrate this towards all the most exposed edges and corners of our leather. Finally, for the last highlight on the leather, I'm going to use pure Kislev flesh, and I'm just going to do a dot highlight. As always, I'm putting these dots in the corners, but also in the leather strips, I'm going to put it just here on the front. Kind of looks like the leather is shining a bit. With the leather now painted, there's only just two things left to paint, the steel and the gold. And I'm going to start by coating all my steel details. For this I'm going to use Iron Hand Steel. Don't forget to also pick up any buttons and rivets with this. With all my steel now base coated, I'm going to wash it with a 1 to 3 mix of Black Templar and Conscious Medium. This is one part Black Templar and three parts Conscious Medium. With that wash applied, I can now paint all the gold details. For this, I'm going to use Retributor Armor. And it's just a simple task of base coating all the details that I want to be gold with this. With all the gold details now base coated, I'm going to wash them with a one to one mix of Dark Gold Flesh and Conscious Medium. And now for the last step on our model, I'm going to take Stonehold Silver and I'm going to highlight both the gold and the steel. And just going to do a very simple edge highlight over all the metallics. And with that last step done and her base painted, our badass Katachan lady is finished. And this is one of those models that it's just, just such a joy to paint. And I've had an amazing time painting this for you guys. So as always, I really hope you enjoyed this one. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Do you like my videos and want to help me make them? Well, there are several ways you can do that. You can follow me on social media. You have the links to all my social media in the description below. You can also check all my affiliate links in the pinned comment of this video. Use those links in the next hobby purchase and help me without any additional cost to you. I also have merch that you can see just below this video or in the shop tab of my channel. But most importantly, there is Patreon and channel members. You have the link to my Patreon in the description below and in the pinned comment of the video. Or if you prefer, you can just click the join button below this video. Patreon and channel members help me do all the cool projects that I want to make and help me improve the quality of my videos. Don't be afraid. No content will ever be hidden behind a paywall, but it's a nice way to help me. You will get something back for university. As I said, guys, thank you very much for watching. A special thank you to Ben Morin, Daniel Figueiredo, Heather Amstead, Lauren Sigismondi, Victor Domen, Michael Boye, 
Christoph Moret, Joshua Bohannon, Ryan Mann, Bell Drain, Javi Mota, Kevin Sulas, Kieran Murthail, Leonard Lindemann, Jonathan Ekelun, Dr. V, G Force, El De Ketch, Sasha Park, Titi Butler, Manuel Vilela, Joe Simpson, Dominic Trevizo, Richard Kietkowski, Brent Sillinger, Mark Jarvis, Gareth Smith, Bill Casworn, Matteo De Rienzo, Aaron Dell, Natius Maximus, Samuel, and Super Neff for being the coolest persons in the planet. Be like this fine folks, join my Patreon and take control.